Okay, my name is Darren Joseph from HGJR Tax. We're a team that seeks to demystify the sometimes confusing world of cross-border taxation. And today we have the honor and the privilege of joining us, Edward Gordon. Edward, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Edward Gordon. I own a company called Preservation Capital Partners. Uh, we've been doing tax structure work uh, for over 30 years, both for U.S. domestic and for non-U.S. Uh, families. Uh, and entrepreneurs, some mm -hmm. actors, some athletes, but not a whole lot, mostly mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and wealthy families. Fantastic. And and today we're going to talk about an often misunderstood concept called PPLIs. Can you speak to what it's not good for? What, it's, what not is good. It? it's not for a client who's an egomaniacal, narcissistic sociopath <laughs> that has to control every aspect of what's going on. <laughs> Because yeah. I will, I will tell you, Senator Wyden is already is, is looking once again into private placement insurance being a area where wealthy people are using this as a device to avoid taxes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's anything they could do about it. It's it's just life insurance. It's just regular mm -hmm. variable life made for mm -hmm. accredited investors. So mm -hmm. it's the it's just institutionally priced. Mm -hmm. And with fle more flexible investments than the retail product, I don't know where you know it's the same section of the code. It's not like there's the, it's not like PPLI a is a different section yeah. of the code. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would avoid an overt uh, exercise of of discretion over what those investments are. I think that's really the pinch in the hourglass. Mm -hmm. So who your client is and their disposition, it may not be for everybody. I don't think this is for investments that are going to earn less than a 5% rate of return. I think that, and I don't think it's really for investments that, that are tax efficient. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to buy municipal bonds and hold them to maturity inside of a policy. It, mm -hmm. It's, it's, you're paying a, a fee for the cost of death benefit and the insurance company's fee. And if you're not offsetting taxes for that, I, I don't know if it's, if it's worth doing. Right. And and so, okay, so we know it works obviously in the U.S. and therefore chances are it's working in other common law jurisdictions. But what about civil law jurisdictions? Because you mentioned you do a lot of work in Latin America. Are those jurisdictions okay with it? Some. So, so it, it, it really depends. Like, like right. uh, yeah. and it changes. So I, I'm, I haven't done anything in uh, Argentina, but my understanding mm -hmm. is that there was... <laughs> Somebody from Argentina is an Argentinian or Argentine. I never got that right. Uh, I, I believe that they have a law that says they can't buy an insurance contract that's not issued by a company out of Argentina. Argentina, right. Uh, and again, yeah. I at one point, I paid a lawyer to put together a grid for me from most mm -hmm. countries as to what, you know, can you do yeah. this? What are the rules? Mm -hmm. How to do this? It is ever-changing. Mm -hmm. So I know in Uruguay you can because I've done it. Uh, mm -hmm. Spain. More, far more problematic. Spain does not recognize trust and they do not recognize the cash value of insurance being not subject to Spanish taxes. So mm -hmm. uh, there's a lawyer that I utilize <laughs> at Baker McKenzie, a couple mm -hmm. of lawyers that I use at Withers. These are big global tax firms. There's others. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're kind of my go-to people because they're more up on it than I am. I couldn't possibly be up on every country, but mm -hmm. the Philippines, Hong Kong, Australia, um, easy. Easy. Mm -hmm. not, it, not, it, it, they all have a certain recognition of insurance, and the U.S. typically has a treaty with them that, mm -hmm. uh, if, for instance, if you have a Bermuda insurance policy, um, Bermuda has a treaty with the U.S. that says if you if you have an insurance policy that's under Section seventy seven of the U.S. Code and eight seventeen H, we'll recognize it as a life insurance policy for all U.S. tax and compliance purposes. So, all right. So you need to pay attention to. Uh, the jurisdictions that are impacted, where the beneficiary is going to be exposed, where is the you know the, the grantor, the person who contributes to the policy, where do they sit, which jurisdictions do they touch? Uh, yeah. it, 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 could be, it could be nuanced. And yeah. you might even have to have a special type of policy. So mm -hmm. you you may need to have a EU and US compliant life policy. Mm -hmm. So you may have a, what we call a dual compliant policy. And that really just mm -hmm. means how much death benefit is needed. You Usually mm -hmm. the US requires more than most um, it, that's just plumbing, but the real, mm -hmm. when we do planning, we look at the situation, 
What's the tax residency of the grantor? What's the tax residency of the trust? What's the tax residency of the beneficiaries? Mm-hmm. What are the rules? Yeah. How do we do this? And I'm the first person to tell somebody no. Right, gotcha. So if you're a six, seven, or eight-figure investor, entrepreneur, or business owner who needs a tailor-made solution from a qualified team of professionals, we can help you achieve the international lifestyle, the freedom, and even the tax savings you're looking for. Visit us at htj.tax and live that international life.